All right, so you're already building GUIs with Python, right? Mm -hmm. But what if you could easily display like really complex hierarchical data? Yeah. You know, in a way that users can actually understand. That's where Kinter Tree View comes in. It really does. It's super powerful. And today we're gonna um we're gonna use this in depth tutorial from Plus Two Net as uh our guide. It's a great resource. Get ready to go beyond the basics too. We'll cover everything from basic setup yeah. to like cool tricks like moving rows around, editing data right there in the tree view. On the fly. Yeah, on the fly. Yeah. And uh and even uh integrating with spreadsheets. It's gonna be awesome. Tree view can really uh change the game when it comes to presenting information clearly. Yeah. I mean, just think about it. File explorers, project management tools, you know, those nested tasks. Oh, yeah. Even visualizing database schemas. It's all possible. So many possibilities. So many possibilities with TreeView. So where do we even begin with this thing? How do we get started? Well, the tutorial starts us off with, like, clear code snippets. Okay. So it begins with importing the modules that we need, creating the main window. Got it. And then uh, initializing the TreeView widget itself. It's surprisingly straightforward for, like, how much power it has. Okay, that makes sense. Now, I'm looking at the code here, and I see this hashtag zero column. What's the deal with that? What's so special about it? Ah, the hashtag zero code. That's the heart of your tree view. It forms, like, the core structure, the tree itself. Okay. And it displays the main text for each row. Think of it, um, think of it like the trunk of a tree. Okay. With all the branches and leaves coming off of it. I like that analogy. Yeah. So if I were building like a file explorer, yeah. the hashtag zero column would list like my main folders. Exactly. And then any subfolders will be nested underneath. Exactly. And with the Travi Show option, you get to decide what the user sees. Mm -hmm. Just the tree structure, just the headings for the columns, or both. So flexible. Yeah, it is. I like it. Okay, now let's talk about those branches and leaves we were talking about, those parent-child relationships. How does TreeView handle that? It's all about the insert method. Okay. You basically uh, specify the parent node for each new row you're adding. You're building that family tree. Right, for your data. Yeah. Okay, so I can create like this hierarchy of information, but how do I actually get to that structured data later on Yeah. if I need to use it? Oh, that's easy. The getChildren method is your friend there. It lets you access the structured data in a really easy way. Cool. But what happens when a user actually interacts with the tree view like let's say they click on a row can we make something happen definitely we've got the on select event for that okay it lets you decide what happens when a user clicks you can capture the id of that row oh interesting and use it to trigger actions like you could display more info about that item yeah. or even start a specific function you know make it do okay. something yeah so we can make our application really interactive and responsive. Exactly. It's where things start to get really interesting, I think. Yeah. And the tutorial even shows us how to add those uh, up and down buttons. Oh, yeah. For navigate. Simple, but effective. So easy for users to move through the data. Right. Good user experience is all about that intuitive design, you know? Absolutely. Okay, the tutorial also mentions editing data directly within the tree view. How does that work? They use entry widgets for that. Okay. So you can modify specific columns, like in the example, they use the name column. Right. And the update function is key here. It lets you change the values for a row dynamically. So if I were managing, let's say, a contact list, hmm. users could just edit names or phone numbers right there in the tree view. Right in the tree view. No need for separate windows or anything. That's so convenient. It really streamlines things and makes for a much cleaner interface. Okay, so we've covered building the tree view, setting up those parent-child relationships, yeah. handling user interactions, even manipulating data. Yeah. What else is there? Well, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Hmm. The tutorial also goes into more advanced techniques like reading all the rows, deleting items, oh. and it talks about these essential attributes that give you granular control over how the tree view looks and acts. I see. So attributes like columns, cursor, and select mode. Exactly. Those let you customize things like what the cursor looks like, what columns are shown, even if users can select multiple rows. Wow, that's a lot of control. It is. It's all about giving you the tools to create a tree view that fits your app perfectly. That's amazing. <laughs> this is already a lot to take in, but wait, there's more, right? I'm really intrigued by these advanced features that tutorial mentions, like text wrapping, scroll bars, and even integrating with like Google Sheets and Excel. You're ready for the next level. I am. I'm ready. Let's take a quick break though, and then we'll come back and dive into all that. A quick break and we'll be back. Hi, 
Join us for a series of tutorials on how to develop applications using our Python Kinter and you will be using PyInstaller to create the standalone GUI applications where you can integrate it with a database so you can store, add, modify data. So the database can be a SQLite or MySQL or any other database. So this is a uh, self-contained built-in application so a single application can be distributed and it doesn't require a Python installer or Python to run on it. It can directly run in your application or in your operating system. So stay tuned to learn more about this. All right, I'm ready to hear more about these advanced features. Let's start with text wrapping. What's the deal with that? Imagine like you have these long pieces of text in your tree view cells. Without text wrapping, it'd just get cut off. Oh, yeah. Or you'd have to scroll horizontally, which is annoying. But uh, with text wrapping, it all displays neatly within the cell. No more headaches. I can see how that would be really helpful, especially if you're dealing with you know, data that's not like short and sweet. Exactly. Yeah. Now, what about scroll bars? Okay, yeah, scroll bars. I know they're important for like navigating large data sets, but are they just like a functional thing or can they actually improve the user experience? They're both, really. I mean, you got to have scroll bars if you're working with tons of data in your tree view. Yeah, you'd get lost otherwise. Right, you'd be totally lost. It'd be overwhelming. But well-designed scroll bars can make it so much easier for users to move through that data. Like imagine presenting a huge spreadsheet in your tree view scroll bars. Let them smoothly go through the information without like resizing everything. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So it's not just about having them, it's about how you implement them, making them user friendly. Exactly. All right, on to the next one, spreadsheet integration. That's the one I'm really curious about. The tutorial mentions Google Sheets and Excel. Is it really as powerful as it sounds? Oh, it definitely is. Think about, you could have a financial dashboard, right? Yep. And instead of updating stock prices manually, you could pull live data from Google Sheets. Wow. Your tree view becomes this like dynamic, real-time display of the market. That's awesome. Or uh, you could manage customer orders, pulling the latest details from an Excel sheet. So we're talking dynamic updates, seamless integration with external data. Tree view can really handle it all, huh? It can. It's like uh, we've gone beyond just showing static data. Now we're in the realm of dynamic interactive experiences. It's pretty amazing. We've covered so much creating the tree view, those parent-child relationships, right. user interactions, editing data, now these advanced features. It's clear tree view's got a lot to offer. Yeah, but we've just scratched the surface. The real fun starts when you start playing with this stuff yourself. So if someone's listening, excited to try out tree view, where should they start? Dive into that plus two net tutorial. It's got like detailed explanations, code examples, yeah. everything from the basics to more advanced stuff. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty, change the code, see what happens. Experimentation is key. And speaking of that, what are some things about TreeView that surprised you? Like things you didn't expect? You know, I was really surprised by how well it plays with other Contour widgets. Oh, yeah. Like you can integrate it seamlessly with entry boxes, buttons, labels, and more. So it's not just about TreeView in isolation, it's about how it fits into your whole GUI. Right, and the level of customization is amazing. For what? Oh, you can go way beyond the basic look, custom fonts, colors, even images inside your tree view. So you can really make it your own. Absolutely, you can create something that looks great and works perfectly for your needs. Okay, so what would you say to someone who's like hesitant to try tree view because they think it'll be too complex or time consuming? I'd say don't be scared, especially with that plus two net tutorial. Tree view is actually pretty approachable. Start small, try things out. You'll get the hang of it. You will, and yeah. you'll realize how intuitive and powerful it is. It sounds like tree view really rewards curiosity. The more you explore it, the more possibilities you discover. It's a journey for sure. And the reward is being able to build these really impressive, you know, data driven applications. That look good and function well. Okay, I'm getting inspired to code myself. Any final words of wisdom before we move on to our last part? Just remember, this is just the start of your tree view journey. Keep learning, keep experimenting, and who knows, you might come up with something even we haven't thought of. I love that. So as we wrap up part two of our deep dive, let's take a moment to like solidify what we've learned. We've covered those practical features, text wrapping, scroll bars, and then that game-changing spreadsheet integration. Mm. What are some of the like core concepts you hope our listeners take away from this? We start with the basics, right? Building that tree view structure. Yeah, getting those parent-child relationships set up, making it interactive. And we talked about how that on slick event mm -hmm. can really bring your application to life. Letting you respond to clicks, make things happen. 
And then there were those attributes, columns, cursor, select mode. All about giving you that fine-grained control over how it looks, how it acts. Right. And of course, we couldn't leave out those advanced features like text wrapping and scroll bars and that spreadsheet integration, which is just wow. Pulling live data straight from Google Sheets or Excel, that's a game changer. It really is. I'm feeling pretty inspired to start coding right now. I bet. But um, before you do, let's think bigger picture for a second. Like, why should anyone even care about Tinker Tree View? What makes it so special for data visualization? That's a good point. I think uh. it's because it's so intuitive. That tree-like structure, it's like how our brains organize I information anyway, you know? Exactly. It just makes sense. And it's not just about seeing the data. Right. It's about, like, doing stuff with it. With that on-select event or editing right in the tree view, it's all about making that data actionable. And you can't forget about those customization options. Run the app. Fonts, colors, even images. You can really make it your own. It's that balance of power and simplicity. Yeah. Yeah. You can handle complex data sets, but it's also easy enough for beginners to pick up. So bottom line, if you want to build apps that are user-friendly and data-driven, Teacher Tree View is a must-have. It is, but um, the journey doesn't end with this deep dive. Go explore, experiment, find those hidden gems in Tree View. I love that. You might even end up sharing what you learn with others. No. Passing on that knowledge. Exactly. So as we wrap up this deep dive into Python to Kinter Tree View, just remember, never stop learning. Never stop experimenting. Embrace that journey of discovery. Push those boundaries. And who knows, you might build the next big thing. Thanks for joining us today. Keep coding, keep learning, and keep building awesome things. Happy coding, everyone.